If you don't want to go through the assisted configuration, you can click the manual setup to configure the base station much more specifically than in the assisted version. Here's the summary of the settings that I have now. The green dot means that it's up and running and it has a nice internet connection. The base station I can name, I can set a password for it, and I can set the time automatically using a time server and we use the Apple time servers either in Europe, Asia, or the United States. Set the time zone for the base station and this means that it has its own clock. It can check with the time server if it has an internet connection and set its own time properly so it always knows what the time is. And you can allow configuration over the Ethernet wide area network port. This is generally a dangerous thing to do because it allows people to come in from outside to configure the base station. So make certain that you know what this would entail if you're going to turn it on. For most of us in work groups, small businesses, homes, schools, the correct setting for this is off. You can set additional options for the base station and these are basically text such as uh, and you can leave the status light on which is the default so it just glows green when things are okay you can also change it so that it flashes when things are happening with network traffic if it's blinking yellow then there's a problem with the base station and you check for firmware updates to the base station if you have an internet connection from the base station at whatever frequency that you want the wireless options that you can set I'll include the network name. Here is the option to set if you want to allow Airport Express devices to extend this network beyond the range of the base station. You would turn this on. You could select the radio mode, the channel. Automatic is the best setting for most of us most of the time unless you start having problems with interference. This is the best general security setting as it says here for most of us in the environments that we're using the airport base stations the worst setting is none you really should protect your network if you allow anyone to get onto the network then they can get through the network to the internet which isn't so bad but they can also get if the computers are not properly protected with accounts and passwords, they can get onto the individual computers. If you are deliberately setting up an open network, perhaps in a public library, in a school, in an office where you want anyone who walks into the office to be able to use the open network, then the correct setting often is no password. If you put a password on it and then you tell people, here's the password you use to get onto our network, what often seems to happen is that's a password that is used somewhere else in the organization for something and it's just not a good idea to ever give out any of the passwords so if it really is supposed to be an open network then say it's an open network and be careful that any device that is using that network is properly protected and if you're in a public library or a school where people are coming in to use your open network, it would make sense to give them information about how to protect their computers so that once they get on to your open network, their computers are not vulnerable. And here's where you set the passwords. And there are options you can set here, such as the multicast rate and all of these items here for improving the performance and avoiding interference. I tend to like these two settings. This makes it better to communicate without interference. And a closed network is really useful because it doesn't show up in the discovery of wireless networks, either in Mac OS X or in other systems. It will show up, if it shows up at all, as an unnamed network. And in order to join that network, you need not only the password, but you need the name of the network. Now I see it here in this menu because I am already on it. If I were not on it, I would not see it here. I would need this name as well as the password to get on. Of course, if you are creating a network that you do want to be visible, like an open network, you would not use this.
And the last set of settings allow you to handle how access is controlled. And if you need these, either you know or your network administrator knows what the settings should be. So those are the settings that you can manually configure for your base station.